question, Hasselblad or Hasselbladski, which camera is right for you? Stay tuned and we'll do a deep dive on the Hasselblad versus the Hasselbladski camera, also known as the Kiev 88. Have you always dreamed of getting a Hasselblad medium format film camera? In this video I'll introduce you to a cheaper version. Here we have a Kiev 88 or rebadged Kiev 88 called a Arex CM. Hello Matt here from MrLug.com. In this video I'm going to do a review of the Kiev 88 and share with you how the camera compares to a Hasselblad. Before we jump into the details I can appreciate firsthand wanting to buy a Hasselblad but not being able to afford it and that's why I bought the Arex. I actually bought the Arex CM in 2012 and it was one of my first medium format film cameras. What may make you laugh is I actually sold a Contax 645 camera with the amazing 80mm f2 lens and instead bought this camera. The Contax at the time was too automated for me and I wanted something a bit more manual and a bit more fulfilling to use. Despite what you may think of Kiev 88 cameras in terms of dodgy reliability, this is actually one of my most travelled film cameras. It's travelled around India, it's been to Poland, it's been to Hungary, Ukraine, and uh, it's never missed a beat. I would recommend getting one of the overhauled Kiev 88 cameras by people such as Arax or Harbelly. Both of these companies no longer sell rebadged Kiev 88 cameras, but you probably can find them on eBay. They are definitely better than the original Kiev 88s because the people that sold them on as under the new names tried to fix the, the common problems with the original cameras. Um, as I say, I've had no real issues with this one. So what's the difference between a Hasselblad and a Kiev 88, in this case an RX CM? Let's take a closer look. If we first spin the cameras round, you'll see that they are very, very similar. They both have the pop-up viewfinder. And both of these cameras are modular, so I'll show you. If I just quickly drop down the, the waist level viewfinders, we can take off the film backs. So on the Kiev, you press the two buttons on the top and the back will come off very simply like that. And on the Hasselblad, press the button to one side and that also comes off. So there you can see with backs removed. So next you've got the waist level viewfinders. You can switch these out for prism finders but I prefer the smaller waist level finders. There's the, Has there's the Kiev. There's the Hasselblad. And did you also know that, that you can also swap them? So the Hasselblad will fit on the Kiev and the Kiev fits on the Hasselblad. So that's a nice thing to be aware of. Okay, next lenses, if I spin them round. On the Hasselblad you have the button here. So now you can see quite how similar they are. We've got a Acumat screen in the Hasselblad, but they're both split prism look with matte on the outside. Uh, I find the Hasselblad probably one stop brighter than the Arax screen or the Kiev 88 screen. But what do they sound like? That is the question. For true 3D sound, I'll put the, the microphone right next to the cameras. Here's the sound of a Kiev 88. And then the sound of a Hasselblad. Winding up a Kiev. And winding up a Hasselblad. To my ears, the Hasselblad sounds a lot crisper and probably more precise than the Kiev. And the same is true when you come to the winding mechanisms. The Kiev is a bit clunky and the Hasselblad feels very precise. If we look inside the cameras, both of these cameras are SLR cameras, so you can see the mirror inside and then obviously the, the viewing screen on the top. And they're the same with the, the Kiev or the Arax. So both very similar, but they are different because the winding knob on the Hasselblad advances the film and cocks the shutter, but the winding knob on the Kiev also has your shutter speed settings. The Hasselblad has the shutter built into the lens, so these are much heavier, generally a lot more expensive lenses because the shutter is in here. This is a leaf shutter lens, the same as most Hasselblad lenses. 
This is a standard lens like you'll get on a SLR camera, so there's no shutter in a Kiev lens. For that reason, the shutter is built into the body on a Kiev, and the shutter is built into the lens and not the body on the Hasselblad. The same is also true when you're setting your shutter speed on a Hasselblad. You have your bulb through to five hundredths of a second on the lens. With a Kiev, you have your settings on the film advance knob. So I don't know if you can see that we've got you've got bulb through to one thousandth of a second maximum with a flash sync of one over thirty. And with the Hasselblad being a leaf shutter lens, you have flash sync speed of one over five hundred, like up to one over five hundred. So maximum one over five hundred. Maximum 1 over 30. That's a big difference if you're a flash photographer. 1 over 30 is not very useful as a maximum flash sync speed on a camera. In terms of taking your picture, both cameras have the shutter release button on the bottom right of the cameras. And both cameras have threaded buttons, meaning you can attach your cable release if you're doing, say, long exposures. If we have now a closer look at the film backs, Kiev, Kiev on the left, Hasselblad on the right. Again, as you can probably see, they're very, very similar. Both of these are obviously six by six film backs with your dark slide. The main difference is the film back on the Hasselblad is very precise and the film back on the Kiev feels a little bit more hit and miss in terms of connecting to the camera. If we just build the cameras back up, so on the RX version that I've got, you have to look for the little mark on the top and then line that up with the mark on the top of the camera. Hasselblad's a bit more like a Leica, red dot to red dot. Turn and click. Did you hear how precise that sounded? Okay, film backs. When you attach the film back to a Hasselblad, you press it across and it feels very, very sturdy and very solid. If you now do the same with the Kiev, press the buttons and it's on, but that's one of the f problems I have had where you see there seems to be like a slight gap here where the film back closes. Uh, they load exactly the same as the Hasselblad, by the way, in terms of film loading. Everything's just a bit more clunky on a Kiev compared to a Hasselblad. One big difference between the Arex CM and the original Kiev is the Arex CM has the CM mount. This lens mount is not the original Kiev 88 mount. This is a Pentacon 6 or P6 mount. Now the reason I bought the RX specifically is because I already owned the Pentacon 6. Still need to do a video on that. And I know that the Pentacon 6 lenses are very good. So because I could use the Pentacon 6 lenses or P6 mount lenses, it made good sense to buy the RX version of the Kiev 88 rather than a standard Kiev 88. I did then also later buy an original Kiev 88 in the silver and black, but I later sold it because I didn't really need both cameras. A few other geeky things to mention. If you happen to find a Hasselblad strap and you can't find a Kiev 88 strap, the Hasselblad strap fits the Kiev 88 exactly the same as it will on a Hasselblad. So that's a good tip if you happen to find a Hasselblad strap or vice versa if you've got a Hasselblad and you found a Kiev 88 strap. The dark slides seem to be identical. You can use the waist level finder on both cameras. You can't use the film backs from a Kia 88 on a Hasselblad, they don't fit. The RX CM version I have has a cold shoe and it also has a PC sync port. So if you're doing flash photography, you can just run your sync cable from the side of the camera straight onto your, your strobes. Just remember, of course, you've only got one over 30 flash sync speed. Now in terms of the kit lens, I actually really like the kit lens of the RX CM or Kia 88 because they focus closer than Hasselblad lenses. So this focuses to 0.6 meters and it's nice and smooth and I have no complaints at all with the lens. The Hasselblad lens is only focused as close as 0.9 meters, the, the 80 mil. So that was a real kind of downside for me when I bought the Hasselblad after owning the Arex for quite a few years. So that's definitely a big pro for the Arex. The lens is focused closer and I really like that. You can of course use macro extension tubes and the like for the Hasselblad to get over that problem or use something like the 120 macro planar lens which I use which allows you to focus closer and it's also an amazing lens. If you're trying to use this camera press across and then if you want to use the close focus screen you push this button here across now and there's your close focus. I guess just showing Hasselblad push up and then a Hasselblad you press and there's your same close focus screen or screen magnifier to help you focus. I do have quite a few lenses for this. I'd say maybe four or five. If you're interested to know which ones, let me know in the comments. My favorite was the 65 mil by far. And that's the lens I used when I was going around India. 
And talking of India, let's have a look at some sample photos shot with my Arak CM. So at the time I was out working in India, so it's made sense to take my cameras with me. If I remember correctly, I only took one lens and I think that is the 60 or 65mm. I'll write it up on the screen which one it is. Really great lens in terms of usability because you can focus closer with the Arax lenses than you can with the Hasblad lenses. Now I realise this won't be a very useful comparison because the Hasblad photos are not from the same time or location or lighting as the Arax photos. But here are a few sample photos shot with my Hasblad cameras. If you want to see lots more photos shot with the Hasblad, I'll put a link in the description below to both an Arax CM write-up on mrluck.com blog and also various Hasblad blog posts. If you want to see a full review of the Hasblad 500 cameras, I'll include a link at the end of this video. So I know what you're thinking. That's great and all that, some nice pictures potentially. But how do the two cameras compare? How are we supposed to tell the difference when, when the photos are not even of the same things? So with that in mind, I also did a side-by-side -side comparison test, albeit not very glamorous, in my bathroom window for the afternoon sunshine, doing mirror selfies. But it allowed me to use both cameras at the same time, in the same lighting, with the same settings. So both cameras are using their 80mm 2.8 lenses and the setups that you see here. So nothing fancy, just the, the basic kit. Once I bought the Hasblad, I basically stopped using the Kiev 88 or Arax CM completely because I prefer the Hasblad. So I couldn't really remember how good or how bad the Arax CM was. So by shooting them side by side, I can tell you 100% Hasblads are easier to focus than a Arax. The Ecomat D screen I use in the Hasblad is roughly one to one and a half stops brighter than the Kiev. Even if you ignore the brightness, it's still definitely easier to focus with a Hasblad than it is with an Arax. When I say ease of focus, it may mean different things to different people. If you just want to shoot something big and easy to focus on in the street, you cannot go wrong with an Arax. And it is absolutely more than capable of accurately focusing, as you may have seen in some of those India photos. If, however, you want to do really critical focusing, say portraits and trying to focus on the, the closest eye, this focus screen that I'm using in this camera is not particularly useful and I find it really difficult for accurate focusing. I did manage it for those mirror selfies, but it took a huge amount of concentration for my little pea brain. On the other hand, the Hasblad is much easier for critical focus, especially if you use a 45 degree prism. I find Hasblads much easier to use with a 45 degree prism. And for any of you Mamiya RB or Mamiya RZ shooters, I'd say the Mamiya is easier to focus than the Hasblad. The Hasblad is easier with the prism than with the waist level viewfinder. This is all for critical focusing. It's easier than the Kiev, and I'm sure the Kiev's easier than something else down, down the chain. Hasblads are not perfect at critically focusing until you get them really dialed in for your particular eyesight or way of working. For example, I find the 80mm lens strangely harder to focus than the 120mm lens. So I shot a lot of my portraits on the Hasblad with the 120 for example. Equally on the Arax I've used the 65mm lens the most by far. I also find that lens easy to focus. So it's that time in the video. Can I recommend the Arax CM or Kiev 88 camera or should you save up and buy yourself a more expensive Hasselblad? If you pardon the expression, I'd say if you're buying a camera for life and not just for Christmas, I would get a Hasselblad. If you're buying a camera for maybe the next couple of years, I would get the Arex CM version of a Kiev 88 or the Harbelli, I think I always pronounce it wrong, basically a modified version, a later version of a Kiev 88. They should have less issues found with the early versions. And if you want the cheapest possible, then get the Kiev 88, but be aware, like with other Russian cameras, you may have some problems where one may work, one may not work. So you might just have to get buy a few ones at eBay, making sure that you can return them if it doesn't work. Similar to my Kiev rangefinder cameras. When they are working, they're great cameras. As I say, if you want reliability, spend a bit more and get a Hasblad. You're not gonna lose money on either of these cameras because the price of film cameras keeps going up and up. So if you're already shooting film, and you've got something you can use at the moment, perhaps save up and get yourself a Hasblad because it's a bit like a like M3 in rangefinder terms. They're beautifully made and they are built to last, so it probably is worth the investment. And you won't experience many of the quality control issues which you often find with some of the Russian cameras. If you have no camera and you're wanting to dive straight into medium format, then it may be worth getting the Arax CM 
learn to see if you enjoy the 6x6 format and then if you do perhaps just a later date save up and look out for a good deal on a hash bladder if you then want to make the jump. I would say one of the biggest benefits of the Hasblad system is the better lenses. I probably should have mentioned this way earlier in the video, but if you want to compare image quality, I would say Hasblad lenses are going to give you better image quality than Kiev lenses. But like with every lens, you're going to get some good lenses, some bad lenses. I've not really found any bad lenses for a Hasblad system with a Kiev 88, depending on if you're using Kiev 88 lens mount or if you're using P6 lens mount, as I do here. Some lenses would be better than others, so it'd be worth reading some of the reviews to work out which lens gives you the, the best bang for the buck. And talking of bang for the buck, does a Kiev 88 offer the best bang for the buck in terms of a 6x6 medium format film camera? To stop this video from dragging on even longer, I'll do a part two video called something like best budget 6x6 cameras. And I'll compare the Kiev 88 against two other reasonably priced 6x6 film cameras. And so on that note, if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please hit the like button. If you want to see the part two video, feel free to subscribe and then you'll see that video come out if you turn on your notifications. As always, a massive thank you to my patrons and see you in the next video. Bye.